Hi, and welcome to Cunningham Piano Company's Organ Group. My name is Colin O'Malley, and today we are going to talk about playing Christmas carols on the organ for those of you who might be new to the instrument. In this video, we are going to explore three different Christmas carols, ranging from the very easy to a little bit more festive. So for those of you who are completely new to the organ and might be a little um, nervous about what you're looking at here, let's just do a quick overview of what is here on this instrument and what a basic overlay of just about any organ you'll sit down at uh, comprises of. So on this particular instrument, we have four divisions. So let's think of the organ as really a collection of separate instruments. And this organ here has four separate parts. The top part here is called the swell. The middle here is called the grate. And the lowest division on this organ is called the positive. Some organs, you'll see the choir, and that's a little bit of a different style, let's say. And then, of course, we have the pedals. Each of these divisions has its own group of stops or sounds that play on that particular part of the instrument. So the cool thing about the organ is that by combining different sounds, we can bring out different colors, different sounds for the instrument. Let's listen. So this is one stop. Let's add another. You hear the difference? Let's add another one. and maybe a few more. So on these stops, we have all of these numbers and Roman numerals here, right? So what do they mean? Well, let's look at this roar borden with the number eight on it. So if this were a pipe organ, that would mean that the lowest pipe in this stop, in this particular set of pipes, is eight feet tall. And registration, different stops on the organ, basically build off of this eight foot rank. And eight feet is piano pitch. So middle C on this keyboard with this stop is middle C on the piano. Now, four feet, this is an octave higher. In fact, this stop is called Geigen octave. As you can hear, it's an octave higher. On top of that, at two feet, we have an octaven. Conversely, going lower, at 16 feet, we have a bassoon. Now, we have some fractions and some Roman numerals here. What do they mean? Well, they are harmonic stops called mutations, never used on their own. For example, we have a nizard here at two and two thirds. As you can hear, that is sounding one fifth above middle C. And the reason we have this stop is for color. Same thing with the tierce. Sounds at a third above middle C. The Roman numeral here, the plongeu, means that four different pipes are speaking at the same time. And I think you can hear that. Again, we never use these on their own. They are always in combination with regular single numbered pipes. And the reason we have that, again, is for color. These stops are highlighting the overtones above that fundamental pitch. So you may have noticed this array of buttons here across the top of the instrument. These are called our couplers. And in the organ world, we call these rocking tabs tablets. The purpose of our couplers is to allow us to play different sounds from different areas of the instrument in other parts of the instrument. So for example, I'm going to have my eight foot and four foot flutes 
here on the swell. And let's say I want to be able to play my flutes from the swell on the grate. So I will activate my swell to grate eight foot tablet. Now, my flutes are playable on the grate. The eight foot means that as I've coupled them, and as you heard, they are playing at the same pitch in the same area of the instrument. This organ does not have 16 and four foot couplers, but you may see that on another instrument. And that simply means that if you couple it, it will play either an octave lower or an octave higher. And coupling is really great because Again, it allows us to combine different sounds of the instrument in one place. So, again, let's say I want my swell reeds, another family of stops, which tend to imitate reed and brass instruments. For example, we have an au bois, which is French for oboe, and a trompette here on the swell. And let's say I want my swell reeds to be playable along with my principal chorus here on the grate, my principal stops, eight foot, four foot, and two foot together. By activating my swell to grate tablet, coupler tablet, they are now playable alongside my principal chorus. And that is where the magic of combining sounds, registration on the organ happens. Let's now get into our registration process for Silent Night. How do we evoke the mood of Silent Night? In a lot of churches, the lights may be off at this time, people are holding their candles, and the organ should reflect that. It should bring people a sense of peace and calm, as this So Love Carol has done for 300 years. On my particular registration here for Silent Night, I'm employing mostly my flute stops and my string stops. String stops, another family imitating stringed instruments. In our pedal here, I have my 16 foot Borden, a flute, combined with my 8 foot Gadot. Another flute. Let's hear how that sounds by itself. Not in your face, just simply there to provide support for everything going on in the manuals, in the keyboards. From my swell, more flutes and a string, an eight foot viol with an eight foot roar burden, a flute, and a four-foot flute. In my grate, more flutes. An eight-foot harmonic flute, a four-foot spire flute, and another string, an eight-foot viol, which is actually coming from the swell, which you can see by that SW and friends. <laughs> Lastly, in my positive, another four foot, eight foot combination of flutes, a Holzgedeckt and a Kappelflute. As you can hear, these all sound very similar, but just enough different to create just a little different effect of essentially the same sound. So putting these together, we're going to use our couplers and I'm going to move my swell flutes and strings to the grate. I'm going to move my positive stops to the grate. And I'm also just going to for a little more support in the pedal, have my swell 
stops also playing in the pedal. Let's hear how that sounds. And maybe this is good for an introduction to Silent Night. Now, what should we do that the introduction is done and we're ready to bring the congregation in? In practice, it is best to add a little bit of higher pitch for the first verse so that one, the congregation knows that it's their time to come in and start singing and to give them some confidence. So I'm going to employ for the first verse from the swell, my four foot Geigen octave and maybe also my four-foot principle from the positive. I'm going to avoid my four-foot octave from the great because I feel like for this carol, even though, again, we want to have a strong introduction, a strong first verse for our congregation, this is still just a little bit too much. So coming from our introduction into our first verse, let's hear how it sounds. So again, I'll play maybe the last two bars of our introduction. Now for my second verse, in general practice, I like to return to the registration I use for the introduction because it's in the middle of the carol. People are already have an idea of what they're singing. They feel comfortable with it. And it's just a nice contrast to the strong first verse. So again, I'll just play a little bit of this. For the third verse, there's any number of things you can do. And just for demonstration, maybe I'll add a soft reed. In this case, on this organ, my soft reed is my oboe from the swell. And to keep this soft and subtle, let's talk about these pedals that you may have seen me been using throughout the course of this video. These are called my expression pedals. Essentially, they help me control the volume of different areas of the instrument. On this instrument, this pedal, as you can see, is marked great positive pedal. So I am controlling the volume of the great, the positive, and the pedal. Swell has a box, has a pedal of its own. So for my third verse of Silent Night, I'm going to keep this pedal down 
or closed, as we say in the Oregon world. And I'm going to move this one up or open it so that there's still a strong support against the subtle sound I want to bring out with this oboe. Now let's talk about some other things we can do in terms of registration for a hymn like Silent Night or other hymns. A very common thing that we can do on the organ is solo out the melody in the same way that an instrument from the orchestra might do that in a certain passage of music. I'm going to use a reed now from the swell, again the oboe. And I'm going to play that against an accompaniment in the positive comprised of my eight foot flute and my four foot flute. And just for a little bit of support, I'm going to again have my 16 and eight foot flutes in the pedal, and I'm going to have my stops in the positive also playing in the pedal by use of my positive to pedal coupler. So let's hear how that sounds. I think another really great thing to do, especially with Silent Night, is employ the use of chimes if you have chimes on your organ. Thankfully, this organ has a wonderfully sampled set of chimes in the Great Division. And I'm going to, again, solo out the melody of Silent Night using the chimes. Let's hear how that sounds. And it's just magical. So we've talked about a number of different sound combinations and registrations in use for carol playing, but how do we use them all at once? And more importantly, how do we go between several of them with only a split second to change? Sure, you can use your hands to activate and deactivate stops, but it's not particularly effective, is it? Especially when you only have a split second and what if your hands are busy? What if your feet are busy? What do you do? Well, thankfully, on the modern organ, we have these wonderful little buttons all over the place. And these buttons in organ language we call our combination action pistons. I want you to think about these pistons in the same way as you might save stations on a car radio. Each one when set recalls a certain combination of stops to be activated at the touch of a button. Let's go back to Silent Night to demonstrate how these pistons work. So for our first verse, we had some flute combinations, flute and string combinations going on. And we had everything coupled, nice and fine and dandy. Now we want to save that 
so that again, at the touch of a button, we can bring back that sound combination, that registration. Let's set that on our general one piston. As you can see, these are numbered one through 10. And as I said, these are general pistons. They control the whole organ. To set on this particular organ, which is a modern computer digital organ, we're going to press our set button and our one button simultaneously, hold, and then let go. Now, let's see if they saved. We're going to go to piston two, which we know there's nothing on it. So see, I moved to piston two, all of our stops went back. I have nothing here. Same with piston three, nothing here. Let's go back to one. You see that? Our pistons just came back. And we have our silent night. Uh, let's program our second verse. Remember we added a few other things for the congregation to feel a little more confident. So as you can see, I pulled out my two foot octaven from the swell. I pulled out my spire flute from the grate. I'm going to once again, set to hold release for purposes. Let's hear how that sounds. Now I'm gonna go back to my one. As you can see, the two things I just added went away. Now I'm gonna to go to my two. And by that process, we can change the sound of the organ like that. For our final verse, let's set a solo stop again. Um, from our swell, we have our oboe, and we're going to play that against our flutes from the positive, and then we're going to add just our flutes from the pedal for a little bit of bass. Once again, set, piston three, hold, release. Let's see if that happened. We're gonna go back to our two. It, we have, again, our registration that we put on piston two. Going back to three. And now we have three different registrations, three different pistons to use with Silent Night.